Hello, welcome to the Friday, October 27th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Berlin, Germany. Kaspersky has of course been in the news recently and I haven't really talked much about that story because most of it really was more political than technical. But Kaspersky now released a report of its internal investigation which I think makes some important points that you have to keep in mind with anti-malware products and that anti-malware products will occasionally send a file that they consider suspicious back to the anti malware company. At least this is what Kaspersky suggests happened in this particular case back in 2014 with an employee for the NSA developing exploits on a home computer that ran Kaspersky's anti-malware software. This is an issue pretty much with any anti-malware company that they may use their software to collect samples. Also, of course, with with any web-based services that you're using to submit samples to. VirusTotal, for example, makes it very clear that any samples being submitted to it will be shared with researchers and other anti-malware vendors. Many modern anti-malware systems also depend on constant network connectivity, for example, hashes of files are being sent via DNS and the like in order to get a more real-time detection of any suspicious files. And another big story, of course, the last few days was the Rocka vulnerability. Rocka refers to the vulnerable RSA keys generated by many Infineon chips. This affected a wide range of of hardware components, for example, smart cards, but also trusted platform modules or TPM chips. If your system is using one of the affected chips, then you need to update its firmware in order to actually receive good keys. Now, even after you do update the firmware, you still need to create new keys in order to make sure that your system is secure. In particular, if you're using these keys, for example, to protect hard drive encryption keys. To make it easier to figure out if your system is secure, there is now a fairly simple test script that you can use in order to check the keys on your system. This particular script will retrieve the public key from your TPM module and check if it is a likely weak key. You probably should run this script even if you did update your firmware just to make sure that you actually did create a new key pair and that the current key pair is no longer a weak one that the old version of the firmware generated. And I will actually include links in the show notes for two distinct uh, scripts. Uh, one of them is a Python script. It just verifies the key really easy and uh, easy to validate, of course, that it's not doing anything malicious. The second one is a C program that you have to compile that also retrieves the key itself from the TPM chip. While it's still open source, it's a bit more opaque. And if you're not a very trusting person, then maybe you will prefer the Python script. And at hackers still like the DDE feature that Microsoft included in Microsoft Office in order to execute external programs. Now, this isn't a vulnerability, so Microsoft is unlikely going to patch it. It already provides ample warning to users that it's probably a bad idea to execute arbitrary software using this feature. But if you're still looking for a way to actually turn this off, there is now a micro patch available from the Zero Patch blog that will remove this feature. Now, this is not strictly speaking a vulnerability patch. It does remove a documented feature from Microsoft Office. But then again, if you don't use the feature, if you're afraid it being used against you, then maybe you'll consider this patch. And while we have been talking a lot about uh, cryptocurrency mining being done either using compromised Internet of Things devices 
or users' internet browsers. The majority of cryptocurrency mining is probably still being done using dedicated hardware. Cryptocurrency miners have been deployed by organizations, hobbyists, and the like in order to participate in the cryptocurrency boom. But often, of course, they haven't been sufficiently secured. After all, all it is, it's a server with custom software that is being connected to to the internet. A new blog post points out how easily these cryptocurrency miners can be found on the internet using standard search engines. And with that, of course, they're open for exploitation. An attacker could easily reappropriate any currency mined by the device to the attacker's account, or of course, uh, use uh, the device for other purposes. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.